On a fair day like this, Dragan Zerdoc will throw his cast nets out twice a day. Like his father and his grandfather before him, they never had to row far out because the Bay of Kotor used to be full of fish. But over the last few years, stocks have dramatically decreased. There used to be so many fish. We'd catch whole shoals, bluefish, whitefish, anchovies. But those days are over. There are no more shoals here now. Dragan thinks cruise ships like this one are to blame. More and more are docking in Kotor's Bay. Hardly a day passes without at least one of the huge ships disgorging throngs of tourists into the small city. Kotor has become one of the top cruise destinations along the Adriatic, next to Venice and Dubrovnik. But while the latter two have been overwhelmed by mass tourism and have put on the brakes, the number of cruise ships in Kotor is increasing. After all, a single tourist spends around 40 euros. This is the only way tourism can prosper here, and a lot of people live off it. Unfortunately, Kotor doesn't have any beaches or even hotels. Kotor only gets day visitors. It's not a sustainable model, as the local tourist office well knows. But they don't want to give up the lucrative business. The only thing that would make a real difference in Kotor would be some big hotels. Then the same number of tourists would bring more profit and cause less environmental damage. There wouldn't just be cruise ships here then, but other day visitors too. But there's a shortage of concrete ideas. Earlier, when buildings began shooting up around one of its World Heritage Sites, UNESCO was alarmed. But now, says Dragan, the bay's entire ecosystem is under threat. This is a desert. The whole biodiversity is collapsing. How can small fish survive here, let alone spawn, when they're being exposed to such enormous currents? Every time these giants dock or are put to sea, their bow planes and stern thrusters act like a huge blender, roiling the water in the bay. The coast of Victoria is considered one of the smaller ships. The really large ones, like the Mine Ship 6, weighing 100,000 tons, anchor outside the bay. For hours on end, they bring their guests to shore with tenders. It's catastrophic for the sensitive ecosystem in the bay, marine biologist Vesna Macic says, but the complex mix of salt and freshwater is somehow still intact, for now. The maritime environment can withstand a lot and can regenerate, but there are limits. Once this system collapses, it will become extremely difficult, protracted and expensive to restore it. To be blunt, I'm scared of what's still to come. The mine shift 6 pulls its anchors, sluicing tons of mud through the bay again. The passage out of the bay leads through a narrow channel, barely wide enough for the giant ships to pass. It's a tourist attraction and marine biologists' nightmare at the same time, and hard to imagine what would happen if a ship went aground. Vesna says the Bay of Kotor should already be a protected area. If Montenegro wants to join the EU, it will have to set up marine reserves. Every country should protect 10% of its coast. That would mean about 30 kilometers here. Montenegro has been working on some marine reserve projects for the last decade. But unfortunately, we still don't have any. 
There used to be hundreds of fishermen in Kotor, Dragan says. Now just a handful are left. And if things don't change, his generation might be the last. <laughs>